welcome to the coding planet and in this series of video lectures we will learn the concept of multi-threading in java in great detail by the end of the course you will have an in detail and practical knowledge about low level programming using threads you will also be able to build multi-threaded applications in java with great confidence in this video i will introduce you to the concept of multi-threading I will also share some key differences between multiprocessing and multithreading. In addition, we will learn why this concept is essential and its importance in Java. Furthermore, I will cover some real-time examples where multithreading concept is used. And as a bonus, we will discuss some important interview questions you can answer after watching this video. Although this course is not focused on interview questions specifically, there's no and there's no way to predict what you will be asked during an interview. The knowledge you will get will definitely set you apart from other candidates. So make sure you watch till the very end. Plus, if you haven't subscribed to Coding Planet, go ahead and do that quickly. Hit the subscribe button. For now, let's get started. So before directly jumping to what multithreading is, let me first discuss some background concepts that would help in understanding multithreading better. We humans are known for our multitasking ability. Right now, you may be having something to eat while watching this video or may be writing down some important points simultaneously. Thus you are performing some task in parallel and this is multitasking. Executing multiple tasks in parallel where each task is independent is multitasking. You see this type of multitasking being implemented in our operating systems too. You may be watching a video on YouTube at the same time listening to some music in your system. In the background too, your antivirus software could be running. Each of this action is a process and is executing in parallel. Let's understand this a bit deeper. Back in the day, in the earlier computer architectures, the CPU were usually single core processors. A core or the CPU core as they call it is the brain of the CPU. It receives instructions and performs those operations to satisfy the instruction. Here you can see a single core processor and a process pool that are waiting to be executed. Process P1, P2, P3 are in the process pool. At a time, only one process could be executed in the core and this resulted in really slow systems. As technology advanced, the world was introduced to multi-core processors, meaning multiple cores work together to perform an operation in parallel. And almost all computers of today have multi-core processors. Here you can see a modern day multi-core processor and a process pool. In multi-core processors, Multiple processes run parallelly and hence more work gets done in short period of time. Here you can see process P1 and P2 are executing simultaneously in two of the cores of multi-core processor. So this concept of executing multiple process simultaneously where all processes are independent is called as multiprocessing or process based multitasking. However, this is achieved only at operating system level. To achieve multitasking at programmatic level, thread-based multitasking was introduced. So let us learn more about thread-based multitasking. So let's understand multithreading. Suppose you are having a banking application and this application has a function called as withdraw amount. Now two users who are completely independent of each other have separate accounts are trying to withdraw some amount from their account. As Java is an interpreted language, the code here would first run for user 1 entirely, till then user 2 have to wait and could not process the transaction. Only when user 1 transaction is completed, user 2 could proceed with its transaction. But this is not an efficient way to go about it. So instead what we do is, we divide an entire program into two independent threads for each user. Now the program could run simultaneously and this is multi-threading. So multi-threading in Java is a feature that, that allows 
parallel execution of two or more parts of the same program and this ensures maximum CPU utilization. Each part of a program is called thread. An important note to be taken into consideration here is there will only be one program executing but inside a program there could be multiple threads. Also threads are independent of each other. So multi-threading is programmatic level multitasking. Each part, each thread is independent of other and multi-threading is also called as thread-based multitasking. Since we have understood what multi-threading really is, let us now understand why multi-threading is important and what are some of the benefits of a multi-threaded application. So multi-threading ensures better CPU utilization. If a computer contains multiple CPU cores, you need to be able to utilize all the CPU or CPU cores with multiple threads. It also reduces the idle time of your CPU. Multi-threading helps in developing more responsive programs. As we saw earlier with a banking application, two users could simultaneously access the application without having to wait for their turn. And this ensures better user experience. Also a point to be noted here is, even if one user request is slow or unresponsive, it does not block the other request. The overall throughput of the server is much greater. Also, threads impose minimal impact on system resources. They could share the memory and other resources. Threads require less overhead to create, maintain and manage than a traditional process. We will learn in depth about this in our subsequent videos. So we have almost reached to the end of the video and let's quickly look into some real life scenarios where this concept of multi-threading is used. So multi-threading is highly used in game development. At some point of time we all have played video games and we all know that video games really require and demand high resources and computing power. And in such scenarios, multi-threading development is highly significant. The objects you see on a game, game screen like the cars, the motorbikes, etc. are all threads that run in the game application. Multi-threading is also used in multi-user environments. In multi-user environments, multi-threading helps in processing the multiple requests simultaneously. Some of the examples of multi-user environments are online banking, ticket reservations, and web servers. In ticket reservation systems, many users are trying to book a ticket at the same time. And here, the application needs to handle multiple requests, and this is done by using multi-threading. Multi-threading is also used in the design, internal design of the web servers. Each server we know deals with multiple requests and the web container converts this request into threads for simultaneous response. As a fun fact, the most commonly used web server, the Tomcat server, by default can handle 200 threads at a time. It means that the server can handle a max of 200 simultaneous HTTP requests. So you have made it to the end of this video and as promised earlier, we are going to discuss some frequently asked interview room questions regarding multi-threading in Java. So let's get started. The first most frequently asked question is, what is the need of multi-threading in Java? So we have discussed this in great detail in this video, but here are some quick points. Multi-threading allows Java code to run in parallel. It allows better CPU utilization. It also helps in designing responsive applications. Multi-threading ensures that we use minimal system resources. The second most frequently asked question is the difference between multi-threading and multi-processing. So I have listed some key differences here. You can go through them. There are other parameters too in which multi-processing and multi-threading are distinguished and we will look into them in greater detail in the next video. So stay tuned. So this is it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Also subscribe to Coding Planet for further videos in this series. For now, thanks for watching.